I'm Kim McIntosh and I teach biology at Shadow Mountain High School and this is the introduction to the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom is very diverse but there are some specific characteristics of animals and they are that animals are heterotrophic so they have to consume other organisms for energy so whether they consume plants or animals they are consuming other organisms they can't create their own energy they have eukaryotic cells, which means their cells um, have a nucleus. And they are multicellular, so they have more than one cell. But they are different than plants because their cells lack cell walls. Now, 95% of the animals on Earth are invertebrates. That means they don't have a backbone. And only 5% are vertebrates. And we tend to think about the vertebrates first. So, you know, if I say picture an animal in your mind, you're probably going to picture an animal with a backbone. But there are a lot of different animals. And so in these presentations, I'm going to be telling you about lots of different animal phyla or lots of different groups of animals. But first, let's talk about how animals feed. So there's some vocabulary here. And the first way is um, herbivore. So an herbivore eats plants only. And then a carnivore eats animals. An omnivore eats plants and animals. So most humans are omnivores. A detritivore feeds on decaying organic matter so um, a detritivore would be like a fungus. There's filter feeders. These are aquatic animals that just strain the food from the water. And then there's parasites. And these are animals that live in or on another organism. Animals have to do respiration. So they have to take in oxygen and give off carbon dioxide. And they do this by using lungs or gills or through their skin, or some of them might use a combination of these. Then they have to circulate that oxygen. So very, very small animals can rely on diffusion to circulate oxygen through their body. But once you see a larger animal, they have to have a circulatory system. So they might have to have a heart and blood vessels. They have to have some way to get that oxygen throughout the cells of their body. Excretion, um, animals have to get rid of waste products. Um, the primary waste product of animals is ammonia. And so this is a liquid waste and it's filtered by kidneys in larger animals, but all animals have to excrete waste. Animals have to respond to their environment. So um, not all animals have eyes or ears but all animals will have some way to respond to sound or to light. And then movement. Um, most animals can move. Some animals don't move, but most animals, they do move and they have muscles that work with a skeleton. So whether that skeleton is internal like ours or external, the muscles are attached to it and that's what um, facilitates movement. And then animals have to reproduce. And most of them reproduce sexually, and that leads to genetic diversity. But there are some animals that reproduce asexually, and some animals that can do both. Now, trends in animal evolution, we know that cell specialization and increase in complexity leads to larger organisms. So if you have a very simple um, animal, it might have only a few cells and they might not be specialized to a particular function. Um, but as you increase that complexity and you get to the larger animals, you'll see that there are kidney cells and they're doing a specific function. And there's heart cells and they're doing a specific function that isn't entirely different from the kidney cells function. And so that increasing complexity leads to being able to have larger animals. And then there's a, um, a basically a hierarchy or a way that this moves from small to large. So there's cells, and then cells form tissues, tissues form organs, and organs form organ systems. 
Cephalization means that the animal has a head region. And so some very simple animals do not show cephalization. We can't tell the head from the tail area. But as the animal becomes more complex, then we start to see a very pronounced cephalization. So if you think about the, the really complex animals that you've seen before, they always have a head. Um, advanced animals have segmentation. So um, their segments might look different, but they definitely show a segmented body. And we see this with worms. Now, like this earthworm picture right here, you can obviously see the different segments on its body, but even humans are segmented. So they have a head region, they have a, a thorax, which would basically be the ribs, and then they have the lower extremity. And we have some vocabulary for the sides of the body. So anterior means at the head. So anterior is going to be the head. Posterior is going to be the tail or the end or bottom of the organism. All right, dorsal is the back side. Okay, so we don't wanna get posterior and dorsal confused with each other. A posterior, you might be talking about the butt, but dorsal, you would be talking about the entire backside of the organism, okay? And then ventral just means the belly side. And we have some body plans that we look at with animals. And um, an animal can be asymmetrical, which means there's no pattern to it. We see this a lot with sponges where there's no particular pattern to their body symmetry. Then we have radial symmetry, and this is gonna be something that is round um, or shaped like a wheel. And we'll see this with um, anemones. And you know, if you think about a starfish, it has a radial symmetry because it's round. And then we have bilateral symmetry. And most of the animals that we would think of have bilateral symmetry. And that means that we can tell the right side from the left side. All right, so there are several different um, phyla in the animal kingdom, and we're gonna talk about these in turn, but we start with the very simple and we move up through the complex. And as we talk about animals, your job is going to be to be thinking about what adaptations do they have that allow them to be more complex? And we're also going to be looking at these animals and comparing them to humans. Um, we can learn a lot from other animals and we can see how similar they are to us. We can also see how different they are from us. So the first phyla that we'll start with is the sponges, the phylum periphera. Then we'll move on to phylum nidaria, which is sea anemones and jellyfish and hydra. Then we will look at flatworms. We'll move on to roundworms, which are, um, roundworms are, a lot of them are parasites. And then we go from there to the annelids, and those are the segmented worms. So um, roundworms uh, generally have a smooth body, segmented worms, we start to see that segmentation. From there we go to the phylum uh, mollusca, so we'll talk about clams and squid and snails. And then we get into the arthropods, the crustaceans, the insects, the spiders. Most of the animals on earth are in phylum arthropodia um, because insects are so numerous. Then we have the phylum echinodermata, which is the starfish. And then the chordots. Um, phylum chordata includes all vertebrates. 